This is the Hour of St. Francis, featuring Ozzie and Harriet Nelson. We'd like you to meet Mr. George McNeil. Age, well, let's say he's about 35. Average height, average weight, medium build, medium colored hair. <laughs> I'd say that's a pretty good description of him. He's a pretty average fellow. Right now he's in church. Right now he's really worth watching. See how intently he's listening to the sermon. Yes, sir, George is really taking this one in. His eyes are open, likewise his mouth. Every now and then he nods vigorous agreement to one of Father Albert's sentences. And in concluding this little sermon on patience, I want to give you something to take home with you. It's just one sentence, but it's very powerful. It's taken from the official morning prayer of the church. This is the way it reads. And may the Lord direct our hearts in the love of God and the patience of Christ. When we think of the cross and how much Christ suffered in silence for us, how can we lose patience and complain? Let's try to be more patient. Let's say every morning, may the Lord direct our hearts in the love of God and the patience of Christ. God bless you. Mass over, George McNeil emerges briskly from the church. Not even a leaden sky and a prophetic drop of rain on his new hat can dampen the glow of pious satisfaction which beams from his face. He catches sight of Father Albert at the bottom of the steps. Good morning, Father Albert. Oh, good morning, George. Mass alone this morning? Uh, Bessie took the kids to early mass. I let her have the car today. She's going to pick me up here. Father, I want to tell you that was a wonderful sermon you gave this morning. Really down the alley and right on the beam. <laughs> Thanks. I don't think it was quite that good, though. Uh, what was the sermon about, George? It was all about patience. Don't you remember, Father? <laughs> I just wanted to see if you did. Yes, sirree. People like us haven't got a thing to complain about. Just like you said, all we have to put up with is a lot of little things like getting up on time in the morning, keeping happy when the breakfast is late, waiting for the streetcars in the rain. Everything you said hit close to home. Well, yeah, that's what I hoped it would do, George. It really rang the gong with me. You know, I know at least 30 people who should have been sitting right there putting on the shoe because it fit them. They really need it. Oh, they do. <laughs> Confidentially, I wish my wife had been there, Father. <laughs> Bessie's a wonderful girl, but she likes to blow off steam, and I'm the one who has to take it. In fact, I think I'll recite the whole sermon for her while we're driving home. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Father. Here comes my car. No? No, I guess it isn't. Well, anyway, I'd better go stand right on the corner, or Bessie will just keep going round and round the block, burning up my gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Father. It was a beautiful sermon. Sure hit home. Bye, son. Let's follow this inspired George McNeil down to the corner. The afterglow of the beautiful sermon on patience still shines on his brow. He stands there waiting with the stray raindrops sliding down his nose. Fifteen minutes later, George is still waiting. But he isn't standing and he isn't glowing. He's pacing up and down, glaring at his watch, muttering words that aren't nice to say on Sunday. What's the matter, George? Remember that beautiful sermon you just heard? Sermon on patience? Ah, at last. Hurry up, George. I'm parked double. Take it easy, old man. Take well, where in the world have you been? I've been standing out here in the pouring rain. Move over, will you? If let me drive, we'll never get home. Oh, George, I'm so sorry. I started in plenty of time. Well, how is that possible, Bessie? I've been standing on this corner for 45 minutes. Well, that's very strange unless you got up and walked out when Mass was half over. I started in plenty of time. It picked me up this evening, maybe. Well, I went out into the garage to get the car, and it had a flat. A flat? Another one? Well, that's a third one we've had this month. How did you get it? How did I get it? Well, yes, who else? George Anthony McNeil, when was the last time I drove this car? Well, that's not the point. It was exactly three days ago. Who's been driving it since then? I have, but I didn't get a flat tire. Okay, if it makes you happy. I did it. 
and you just drove around town for three days without noticing at all that the left front tire was flat on the ground with a big nail sticking in it. Oh, of course. I'm always the one that's wrong. The, uh, uh, George, look where you're driving. You almost took that man's fender off. Well, I can't look and... S- Sneeze. George, for heaven's sake. George, let me take the wheel. I'll drive and you sneeze. I'm coming down with bronchitis or pneumonia or something. Standing out there in a downpour for nearly an hour. Oh, George, stop exaggerating. As soon as we get home, I'm going to go right to bed. I can feel a pneumonia in my shoulder blades. Oh, now, George, you know perfectly well you promised to take the children to see that new western. You've been telling them all week they could go. I don't remember a thing about it. And so on and so on. While George scrapes the paint from nearby fenders, jumps red lights, skids around corners between sneezes. Now, George, is that a nice way to act just 40 minutes after you've listened to a beautiful sermon on patience? It's raining cats and dogs now, which doesn't help George any. Now, what's the matter with that big dope in front of us? What's he parked right out in the middle of the street for, to admire the scenery or something? George, don't you try passing him. There are cars parked on both sides of the street. You'll have to back up. I will not back up. I've got as much right as any taxpayer to drive up this street. Well, paying your taxes doesn't give you the right to get yourself arrested for disturbing the peace. I'll have somebody arrested for blocking the highway with that piece of junk. Probably some woman stopping to powder her nose. Well, how do you know it's a woman? I can't see anything for the rain. Well, who else but a woman had stopped dead in front of me when it's pouring down rain and I haven't had anything except one cup of coffee for breakfast? I'll tell that dizzy dame where to get off, blocking up the whole street. George, will you please control yourself? George! Somebody's going to get a big surprise. Yes, sir. Somebody's going to get an awfully big surprise. But it's not going to be the people in the other car. Hey, you in there, what's the big eyed? Oh, 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 gee. Good morning, Mr. McNeil. Uh, good, uh, good morning, sister. Sister Louise, this is Betty McNeil's father. Oh, the angels must have sent you, Mr. McNeil. We've been sitting here just praying for help. Oh, can I be of any assist, 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 can I uh, assist you, sisters? Well, something's gone wrong with the car. It keeps making a noise, like flop, flop. Uh, it seems to sag on the left side yes. here. Well, that sounds like a flat. I'll take a look, sister. Yeah, that left front tire's flat, all right. Oh, dear. Now, what on earth are we going to do? We have to go way over to the hospital and get back by noon. Well, I'll... I'll fix it for you, sister. Where's your jack? Jack? Oh, I know what it is. But it's in the basement. None of the sisters know how to use it, so we never bring it along. But you've got to have a jack. I'll get one out of my car. We're so sorry to put you to all this trouble, Mr. McNeil. Oh, it's no trouble at all, sister. I'll be back in a minute. That's what you think. George, you're all wet. Well, it's raining out here. Now, don't start asking a lot of questions. Just get the jack out from under the back seat. It isn't there, George. Well, where is it? Home in the garage. What? Now, before you start yelling, because I forgot to put it in the back of the car after the man used it this morning, the man didn't use it because it's broken because you rolled the car over it and you never took it out to be fixed. Well, I've got to have a jack. Well, there's a filling station three blocks down the street. Three blocks? Oh, for goodness sake. George, remember, this is Sunday and you just came from church. Remember the sermon, George? It was all about patience. But all you're thinking about now is jacking up the car while Sister Margaret stands in the rain holding an umbrella over you. Well, anyway, we did remember to bring an umbrella. Yeah, that that helps, Sister. I wouldn't have come out in this rain at all. It's the only chance I've had all week to go see Sister Josephine. You know Sister, don't you, Mr. McNeil? Yes, I ought to, Sister. She taught me in the third grade. Taught my daughter Betty, too. She's been in the hospital for two months. Oh, she has? Gee, that's too bad. The doctor says she should have gone six months ago. But she said she just couldn't give in. We're short two teachers this year. Reverend Mother didn't even know Sister was ill. She must be pretty old now. Yes, I guess she must be. Somehow, though, it's so hard to think of her as being old. She was so patient. She never complained. All those stairs in the convent and the school, I don't see how she ever made it. 
Oh, being in the hospital's not so bad as long as she keeps cheerful. I remember when I had my perforated appendectomy, I kept myself laughing all the time just thinking about the day I was going to walk out of there. Sister Josephine won't be walking out. You mean she's got to stay? The doctors told us this morning there's, there's no hope for Sister Josephine. Oh, gee, that's awful. I mean, gosh, that's awful. The doctor says she must be suffering terribly, but she's so patient. She says she's ready to go if the Lord wants her, but... She can wait until it's time. Gee, I, I can't get over it. Sister Josephine. She certainly is an example for anybody. I'm afraid this umbrella isn't much help, Mr. McNeil. You're soaking wet. Oh, it's, it's nothing to worry about now, Sister. It, it's all fixed. I don't know how to thank you. Sister Louise and I will say a rosary for you tonight. Oh, thanks. Goodbye, Mr. McNeil. Goodbye, Sister. Well, George, are you a mess? You're dripping like a shower, your hands are full of grease, you're cold and you're hungry. You ought to be mad clean through. What's the matter, George? You've got such a funny look on your face. Well, I saw your dizzy female. Did you tell Sister Margaret to stop powdering your nose and get that piece of junk off the highway? Hurry up and get in the car, dear. You look like a bundle of wet wash. Bessie, the sisters were on their way to the hospital to see Sister Josephine. She's not going to get better. Oh, not Sister Josephine. Oh, that's terrible. She's been at the school so long and all the kids are crazy about her. Yes, yeah, she certainly earned her rest. <laughs> oh, George, you are catching cold. How do your shoulder blades feel? Oh, there's nothing the matter with me. A little hot coffee won't cure. Oh, how was Father Albert's sermon? You didn't tell me. Oh, Bessie, it was a wonderful sermon. Well, tell me about it. Maybe later when we get home. I'd like to think about it a little myself first. Poor old George. He had to learn the hard way that patience is not something you can carry out of church with you after a good sermon, like your hat. Patience is a virtue which George and all of us who really want it will get by working at it. We can help ourselves tremendously by starting every day with that brief, powerful prayer. May the Lord direct our hearts in the love of God and the patience of Christ. This quarter hour has been brought to you by the Third Order of St. Francis, featuring Ozzie and Harriet Nelson. The Third Order is a living society of men and women in the world who in their businesses and professions and in their ordinary family lives nevertheless dedicate themselves to the ideals of St. Francis. And who with St. Francis pray, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Amen. Amen.